Today, we're gonna to talk about minimum and maximum levels of airbrush maintenance and where we should fit on that continuum for the easiest airbrushing experience with the best results. I'm Warwick from Harder and Steenbeck, and this video is part of our Need to Know Basics. So here I have laid out on the table the contents of our maintenance kit. Now, I'm gonna say this is kind of overkill. It does cater for all situations that could arise, but it's definitely not an attempt for us to communicate to you that you should use this stuff every time you come to clean your airbrush. That is definitely not the case. So if we go through what's in the kit, first of all, we have these pipe cleaning brushes here. Now we really like these because they're very, very well made. They're very unlikely to drop or break their bristles inside the airbrush. Just understand though, that these are a contingency. If you've been a terrible person and you've let paint dry inside your airbrush, you should never need to use these if you never let paint dry inside your airbrush. So that's kind of your golden rule. Remember that as soon as you get in there with something even slightly abrasive like this, and you start kind of working in there and cleaning and cleaning, you're abrading surfaces, even in a minuscule way, but you are, and that's lifing your airbrush. So you wanna avoid ever having to use them, but they're a good contingency. This tool here, is our uh, tool for adjusting the, the tension on your needle packing. The needle packing or the needle seal is the seal that sits just behind the paint cup of your airbrush. And its job is to stop paint coming into the back part of the airbrush. If that isn't working right, you might see when you come to pull the trigger back on your airbrush, you might see some bubbles coming up in the paint cup, coming up from the back side of the paint cup. If that's the case, you wanna be looking at your needle packing. If you're seeing bubbling in the paint cup coming from the front side of the paint cup, then it's more than likely your nozzle seal. We'll come back to that. This though is the tool for adjusting your needle packing. When should you need to adjust your needle packing? In our experience, almost never. Our needle packings are designed and they're made from a material that's extremely stable under all kinds of chemical attack. You don't need to remove them to clean your airbrush and it's extremely rare that you would ever need to adjust it. Okay, we do it pretty carefully at the factory and our experience is, is that they can go for years without ever needing adjustment. The way that it works, it's got a little sort of portion of a fixed needle and a flat bladed screwdriver. This is the, uh, the nut that holds your needle seals in place. You just load that on there like that. You take the seal pack, you load that on there like that. That will go down inside that nut and then it goes up inside the back of the airbrush which I'll now quickly disassemble. Show you one of the things that we really like about these airbrushes that you can take them apart real quick like this without needing any tools. This whole back end just screws right off. Once that's all out of the way, then to install this needle packing, you just slip that down back of the airbrush and I'll wiggle it around till it's located in there. Screw it in till you feel a slight pressure and I do mean slight and then withdraw it a little bit so you can feel how much it's dragging on that short needle and when you can feel it drag a bit but not much and you take it out and touch it again. So that's how that works. This tool here is very often misunderstood. Now most airbrush companies will make a tool similar to this so if I unscrew the cap it exposes this deadly looking blade. And what this is for, people call this a nozzle cleaner or a nozzle reamer. Now, most airbrush companies produce their version of this tool. Now, as you can see, it's a wicked looking piece of kit. And that to me looks like something that's very capable of damaging airbrush nozzles. And it's true. Now, obviously we make it with a taper that's appropriate to the inside of our airbrush nozzles, but it is absolutely not something to be used as an airbrush nozzle maintainer. You do not use this every day. What it's useful for is if you, again, have allowed paint to dry inside of your airbrush nozzle, which is something you should never ever do, but if you have, and you don't have a spare, and you wanna just get out of jail for a couple of days, okay, use this tool to scrape any dried paint out of your airbrush nozzle. Never use forward pressure on this. It's extremely sharp, and you will take material 
out of that airbrush nozzle and you don't want to do that. You want to literally put it in until it just stops and then turn it around gently. Just turn it around gently inside the airbrush nozzle, never pushing it forward. And just let it do its work, it's tapered, so it'll do it automatically to bring that dried paint out the back of the airbrush nozzle. But again, any one of these tools from any airbrush company, please don't ever look at it as an airbrush nozzle maintenance tool. It's a get out of jail free card if you've got dried paint in your nozzle. But remember that any airbrush nozzle from any airbrush manufacturer has likely been made on an extremely high tech CNC machine. You're never gonna be as accurate using one of these. So just use it if you absolutely have to, if you've got dry paint in there, but please don't try to use it to reshape your nozzle because it won't do the job as well as we do it in the factory. So that's really what that is. And then we come to the seals and how to identify them on a hotter and steam bag. These are pretty easy to identify, these larger ones. These are three spare nozzle seals that go on the back of the nozzle. Um, they feel quite hard and they're a translucent PTFE type material. And then we supply these seals as well. Now, there are actually two different types of seal here. These three are needle packing seals. And this seal here is a seal for the top of the air valve. Now, the way that you tell the difference is this one is about half the thickness of these. There's no other way to tell them. So the, the seal for the top of the air valve is about half the thickness as the needle seals. And that seal is located on the top of the air valve here. So you just slide it over the air valve shaft and it sits inside there like that. Now, again, the material that these seals are made from, they are extremely chemically resistant to a huge range of chemical compounds. It's highly unlikely that you'll ever need to replace them. People replace them more often if they lose them uh, when they've stripped their airbrush more than anything else. So again, please don't look at uh, a seal kit from Hotter and Steenbeck and think that we're advocating that you need to be replacing your seals regularly. If you do, you're probably spending a little bit more money with us than you really need to. Um, the better important thing is, is to focus on keeping the airbrush clean of dry paint. Don't ever let paint dry in it. As long as you do that, you're gonna find that you barely ever need to do any maintenance tasks on it with the things in this kit. But it is a great kit to have if you've got a problem and you just wanna deal with it and continue to airbrush. Coming back to the start of the video where I talked about maximum and minimum levels of effort, this content of this represents the maximum level of effort, which is absolutely not necessary, okay? The minimum level of effort is really just don't ever let wet paint dry inside your airbrush and only clean on a daily basis the parts of your airbrush that actually see paint. As long as you stick to that basic rule, you're gonna keep yourself on the minimum end of the scale, which is really the best for your airbrush. And guess what? As we always say, not being an airbrush mechanic means you get to spend more time painting. And that's really the goal of these videos. Hope it was helpful. Please like, please subscribe. Let us know what you liked and let us know if you've got any future ideas that you'd like us to cover in other videos.